I've got what I think are three key tips for classroom tech success. But then what I'd also like to do is turn it over to all of you at some point too and hear what your tips are too. So just kind of keep that in the back of your mind. But you know, I know for me, I've found that in my own classroom, <laughs> when I very first started using technology, it was like, anytime I use technology, it's gotta be good, right? I mean, you get those laptops out, the principal comes by and you're like, look at me, right? You know, then I started to realize that some of that stuff kind of felt like the like worksheets that I was assigning only in digital form. And at some point that started to dawn on me and I'm going, there's got to be some better ways to do this, I think, you know, and so that's that's kind of what I came across. So and tech can kind of make us feel overwhelmed, right? There's so many tools. There's so much stuff. I mean, you look around this vendor hall and there's so many things that people want to help put into your classroom. But the big question is, will it actually help? I think if there was one thing that everybody should keep in mind as they're at this conference is to ask that question, how is it going to help? You know, how is this actually going to boost learning in my class? And um, so for me, I know that's, that's one of the big things I've always come back to. If I'm going to use that, that's great. Is it going to be better? So I think really, I won't get too theoretical on this. I kind of feel like technology is like a catalyst, something that can improve what you're already doing. It doesn't do it by itself, you know, but I think when we use it along with good solid teaching, it can really, really help. So here's tip number one for me anyway. This is the big question I always, always, always come back to. Does it move the needle for learning? So I look at the technology that I want to use, the ideas that I want to use with technology, and I think, okay, if the learning is at this level, if kids' achievement or if what I can see with my eyes and my ears to know that they're learning and that they get it, can technology do this? Can it do that or can it do this? And if it can't, if it does this and it doesn't go anywhere, I've got to consider whether I even want to use it. You know, there's, there's a case for saying that if it does this and it doesn't move it up, that at least we're getting kids used to the tool and the skills and getting them a little bit of that digital fluency, you know, where they're used to the tool. But I think at some point, if it doesn't move things significantly in this direction, then we got to wonder whether we really need to use it. I know that's kind of simplistic, but that's just like the core, I think, of what, of what I've come to believe about that. So I think that's just one little simple question that we can ask ourselves. Does it move the needle for learning? And if it doesn't, we got to wonder either A, do we need it? Or B, how can we do it differently so that we can actually move that needle? Number two, don't use too many digital tools. I think um, if anybody, has anybody been to any of Leslie Fisher's stuff today? She talks about um, how she has um, what she calls, it's not like ADHD, she calls it ADST. She calls that attention deficit shiny thing. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, there's a shiny thing, you know? And so um, I think it's so easy for us to get that, you know, because I know, especially for me, especially when I got on Twitter at first, you would see other teachers using different tools and I'm going, oh wow, what they're doing, that's really cool, I ought to try that. Oh, but this person over here is doing that and all of these people are using this one and I haven't even used that yet. And I start to think, man, if I'm not using all these things, am I doing a disservice to my kids by not bringing this stuff in? And so I kind of got into the overwhelm stage, but then I realized that I was overwhelmed, but my kids were overwhelmed too. Have you guys ever done that before? Like totally overwhelm kids by putting too much stuff on them? Right, yep, yep, exactly. What I've found is that if we have a couple of core tools that we go back to, here's the beauty of that, is that the kids get, I'm gonna go back to that word fluency again, they get that fluency with that tool so that the technology almost becomes transparent. You know how technology is transparent, which means that we're not even thinking about using it. It's like when you're writing with a pencil. You're not thinking about the pencil, unless the lead breaks, but you're not thinking about the pencil. You don't get training on how to use a pencil. Photocopiers are kind of like that. Like, 
How long has it been since we've had professional development on how to use a photocopier? Thank goodness, right? But I think that's where, if we can help kids get to that point where they're using those couple of core tools so that they don't have to think about it, then what are they thinking about? They're thinking about our content. They're thinking about the lessons. They're actually learning, you know? So I think that's, that's one of the big ones for me is, what are your couple of core digital tools that you want to use? And then here's three. Go to the student's world. So I'm real big on like, kind of like eavesdropping on my students. I hope that's not like the creepy kind of eavesdropping, but I love to hear what they're talking about, you know? And like what websites they're interested in, what, they, what they're doing, what they're, t you know, what's going on in pop culture even. And then the big question is, how can I bring that back into the classroom? Um, there's a book called Instant Relevance, written by a guy named Dennis Sheeran, who's a math teacher. And in Instant Relevance, he talks about how things that come out in the news and in pop culture and everything can be like jet fuel to your lessons. Because that's the stuff kids are talking about anyway. That's what they're interested in. And if we can inject a little bit of that in, I think that's huge. The other thing that goes with this too is with those digital tools that students really, really love. The, the example I'll give you right now is Instagram. You know, Instagram is still, is still huge. And the question is, how can we do that if we don't want to like have every kid get an Instagram account? We don't want them to all download the app. Some of them don't have the devices. Here's, my, here's the thing I've been really big on with that. You don't have to have the app to create the experience. Does that make sense? So you think about like, how can we recreate those experiences that kids really, really love without downloading the app? So I've got a, um, a Google Slides like template that lets you create Instagram stories, right? Like Instagram stories on Google Slides. It's, it's a way to bring that content into something that the kids really like. If you wanted to check out that uh, template, by the way, you can go to ditchthattextbook.com slash Instagram stories. I may pull that up after I'm done here, so if you're interested in seeing it. But with that, it's like we recreated the idea of Instagram stories in Google Slides. So if that's one of your core tools, there you go. That's not you know anything new that you have to create. So let me throw it to you guys. What are your key tips? Those are my three. My three, again, were go to Students World, don't use too many digital tools, and does it move the needle for learning?